Welcome to iLecture Online and here we're going to take another look at hybridization and the double bond. Traditionally when we talked about something like uh, ethylene, we have C2H4, we thought of it as a molecule that looked a little bit more like this. We have two carbon atoms, each carbon atom is attached to two hydrogen atoms and then we know there's a double bond between the two carbon atoms and so typically speaking though we would have one sigma bond and one pi bond going around it. So what we really don't see here is that there would be another bond coming straight across like this which would then represent the sigma bond and then we have a pi bond coming one above one below it actually the pi bond is the entire two portions of the what we see here that's here in, in gray but in actuality that is not really what's taking place for example this does not explain the orientation of the hydrogens where we realize there's exactly 120 degrees between the hydrogens and there's 120 degrees between the hydrogens here and the bond between the carbon it looks like that is a perfect symmetry there so a symmetry like trigonal planar symmetry that we expect from an sp2 hybrid hybridized bond and it turns out that's exactly what really is happening Instead, what we should be realizing that indeed we have the two carbons like this with the two hydrogens at 120 degrees. You can see it like that. And now 120 degrees between the two hydrogen bonds and the bond that would then connect the carbon like this. But then we also realize that there is additional bonding taking place by the p orbitals right here, which then bend over like this towards one another and then form the, oops, I'll do it like this so you can see it, and then form the pi bond, one above and one below that. That's a single pi bond but two portions to make up that pi bond. And so what we then have to realize is that there is indeed a hybridization taking place from the existing arrangement of the electrons in carbon. We know that we have two electrons in the 1s orbital, two electrons in the 2s orbitals, and two free electrons. I shouldn't say free electrons per se, but two electrons that initially could make bonds here in the p orbitals. But we know that carbon makes, makes four bonds and so therefore we need a, a rearrangement of these electrons, there's a reformation of the, of the orbitals and what we then see that this then becomes a hybridization of the orbitals but not quite what we would expect. So first what's going to happen is there's going to be a promotion of one of the electrons, for example this electron will move over to one of the free spaces in the p orbitals like that, so this one now would be gone and instead of making a sp3 hybridized orbital system it actually makes an sp2 hybridized orbital system like this so we have three identical orbitals that would then be an sp2 uh, hybridization so three identical orbitals all at 120 degrees apart from one another in a planar arrangement and then there would still be a regular p orbital in a direction perpendicular to the direction of the hybridized orbitals. So what we end up here, for example, a PZ orbital, and then this would also have a single electron in it. So what happens now is we end up with two portions like this, where we have the three hybridized orbits in gray at 120 degree angles, two of them connected to hydrogen, one being able to make a sigma bond with the other hydrogen. So they come together like this, and end up with uh, an arrangement that looks just like that. But there would still be a p orbital left that's not hybridized with a single electron zipping around between the two portions of that p uh, orbital and they can then form a pi bond by coming together. So what happens here is then you can take a look at it here. We have the three orbitals that are the hybridized orbitals from the sp2 right on both sides like that. Those then join together that becomes a single bond between the two but then end up, you end up with something that looks like this with the two hydrogens sticking out, one here, one there, two hydrogens sticking out, one there, one there and then we have the p orbitals in the z direction which is perpendicular to the arrangement of the rest of the molecule with a single electron in them like so and now what happens is those then will bend over and let me get my red pen right here so those then will bend over and end up making a pi orbital like that. So we end up with a, uh, a pi bond, I should say, not necessarily pi orbital, but pi bond, connecting that second bond. So something that we, in the Lewis structure, would see as follows. So in the Lewis structure, we would take, of course, two carbons and four hydrogens joined together into an ethylene molecule, 
It would typically look like this. We'd see the double bond like that with the hydrogen sticking out. And you can see that the octate rule is uh, satisfied. Each carbon has eight electrons part of the time. You can see two, four, six, eight in bonds like that. Each hydrogen has two electrons part of the time, so that looks perfectly fine. But in actuality, what happens is that three of these bonds are actually hybridized bonds, and then the fourth bond becomes a pi bond that sticks up and above the actual uh, orientation of the molecule itself. So there you can see that hybridization isn't necessarily straightforward. All of the available electrons form into a hybridized uh, uh, orbital. You can also see that in some cases it's a, a mixed bag, so to speak, where in this case only three of the electrons exist in hybridized orbitals at 120 degrees angles with each other. So that's a planar, a trigonal planar format. And then we have the p orbital that still survives sticking up above and below the molecule. Again, looking like that. So the p orbital sticks up above and below, which then is able to bend over and form a uniformed pi bond. So there you go. That's what we call hybridization with a double bond. And on the next video, we'll see the hybridization with two uh, pi bonds, so therefore a triple bond, and see what that looks like.